people don't know, but uh, papayin sugar is a euphemism for fellatio. Some people don't. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dyson. I'm joined as always by Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. And Danae Hughes. I am not leveling up my D&D character right now. We write for I'm- Cinema Sins and TV Sins and do various other things inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. All right, I guess I'm- we each have to list the things we're not doing right now. Um, okay. yeah. I am not spitting in a spittoon. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. I am not mm-hmm. wiping pizza sauce off the tip of my nose. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm Jonathan, also- what are you not doing? <laughs> Uh, I am not getting a massage. I'm not <laughs> ever I'm again. Not turning into a monkey on Dungeon Dragons. Oh man, the uh, so those two things. One of them you will probably hear about in the outtakes. <laughs> one of them you will only hear about if you're a member, because Danae yeah. talks about her uh, career as a massage therapist in our members only show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you, you're not sure privy to those stories yeah. Uh, yeah. Salt, unless you support. Salty, uh... I like your salty balls. What is that sketch on <laughs> SNL? What is that? <laughs> Shweaty. I- Sweaty balls. Thank you. Salty. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Suck on my chocolate salty balls. I also learned massage Put them in your mouth and suck them. Sorry. Massage clinic professional. Massage parlor. Maybe not. A That's new lesson. I've learned. A new lesson for uh, for Jonathan, yep. uh, which is always a good one to have. <laughs> so if you want to hear any of that, now's a great time to say you should be a member. You can be a member hey, of CinemaSins. What level membership do you have to be to get the bonus podcast? Every CinemaSins member gets the bonus podcast. Podcast. Okay. So, I'm about right. to say to get the massage. <laughs> that's well. That's the way up membership right there. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the unlisted. Like... That's a super secret unlisted membership right there. <laughs> what did Chris say that one time? Is that like the million dollar a month? Right. Or yeah. Like yeah. That? Something like that. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, uh, we are excited to uh, tell you all about all the fun stuff from this past week in the universe of the Sinan, and uh, we'll get right into it. Let's get into the Sin Side Scoop. What's he building in there? I've got a secret. I've got a secret. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. We're going to take a look at the videos from the week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we're sending in general. And uh, we'll start with TV Sins and finishing up the Rick and Morty run with Star Mort Rick Turn of the Jerai. Uh, how are you guys <laughs> feeling about that? Like how that it's over? You know, that's a good question. We can probably start with that because it was a little bit of an experiment for us, uh, both in the fact that I am now doing narration on the channel. And so we started with these Rick and Morty episodes and doing that as well as sending something that just happened. And man, on all accounts, I'm pumped. I think it went really well. It had a lot of fun. Uh, People seem to really enjoy it. I am already looking forward to what is that next opportunity to send stuff as it happens. I honestly, maybe I'm just like kind of in the moment right now. I feel like it might be the future of the channel in some ways where the stuff we're sending is the new stuff, you know, and then every once in a while we'll go back and do a pilot of an old show or that kind of thing. I don't know. It's just something really activating about it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, Corona kind of. It, I don't, I don't know when there's going to be consistently new television. It kind of feels like you know we were looking at like August. There's definitely not as much new stuff coming out over the next couple of months. Yeah. Um. So we'd probably have to wait till that happens. But yeah, I mean, it would have to be a very specific show. I mean, I don't think we'll be doing this for like Chicago PD. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to guess uh, that's not one we're going to be tackling. It's interesting uh, because you kind of look. It, it almost it. It's almost like um, recap culture. I don't know if you've ever seen like YouTube channels that do episode mm-hmm. recaps of you know popular shows, uh, written recaps. A lot of uh, blogs will do that kind of thing. Uh, uh, I think of TV Without Pity as you know one of the most famous examples of that kind of thing. So there is a world where it, it would be possible in some way if we could figure it out where we would send you know episodes of America's Got Talent every week as the new episode happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's just this kind of thing where it's like it's kind of in the public consciousness right now for a certain group of people who would love to hear about all the mistakes and the, all the stupidity of reality to, you know what i mean there's just yeah i don't know there's a lot of interesting options it opens up and i'm not saying we're going to do any of that it's just nice to expand our idea of what's possible with sinning television and yep. i think it really really achieved that today what did you think uh i really love when an idea becomes reality and then it went well 
And so it feels really good. It feels like it was a really good experiment, a good project, a good test of our team. So for me, my excitement is not even about like the content. It's like it's more what we were able to accomplish as a group because there were concerns going in like, are we going to be able to do this? And and now we sort of have tested our metal a little bit, not only as the writers and as a new narrator, but even the editing team, like being able to turn a video around and work together quickly. I wonder if it's always going to be like something that we can continue to keep up. I think for the short run, it was a really good experiment. And we should do what I always think about doing after a project ends, which is, okay, let's go back. Let's talk about what went well, what didn't go well, what we do differently. And but I think it was a major success from a project level. And also it was fun too, because we got to have more people see our work because our content was really relevant in the moment. And so people were um, finding it in a different way for the first time. The uh, the quickest of the five was 72 hours air to upload. And that's exciting. The I, the idea that we could have, and you may not realize that because we posted them the Monday after. So they, they all mm-hmm. posted about eight days after air. But a couple of them were ready like that Wednesday night slash Thursday morning, you know? And yeah. that's exciting to know that we can turn around a good video in three days from air. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Right. Well, can we do also, it? everything had to be done immediately, which was which mm-hmm. was daunting. But also, when it was done, it felt really good because you're like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not dragging that out over like three or four days. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, a, and, it's a super different experience because from yeah. writing to editing, it it comes to the front. And sometimes in our flow, just you know, you're here for the show to listen to behind the scenes stuff. But sometimes we'll have movies that have to be done immediately, and they are a priority over everything so i would wonder if we had multiple you know um immediately do a uh, main channel uh, content that needed to have editing and, and eyeballs on it if that would ever interrupt the flow of us being able to do something so turnaround the immediacy was intimidating for me not only because i had to watch it and turn it in on monday um and and that sometimes i think would be difficult if we had a lot of other scripts that were due or projects that were going on. So the immediacy of it isn't, yeah, is probably my least favorite part, but it feels really cool to be so relevant. And so that's the level of work that we know we can do. And I think it went really well. Yeah. Um, would, would I want to do it every single week? I don't know. <laughs> but because we have a writing team, the workload was, you know, um, even really nicely kind of spread out amongst us and we had Mm -hmm. chris writing regularly so Mm -hmm. uh he actually had stuff to say about this episode too so whenever you're ready we'll just jump on in yeah let's start with our thoughts on the episode uh this was an atkinson watkins script so chris and jonathan were the main writers on this Mm -hmm. and uh yeah what chris have to say about this episode the final episode of season four i'm gonna ask aaron before i do this can you start to like modulate my voice and like post (laughs) <laughs> you know, to where I have some sort of no. cool, like, reverb. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I can. I just don't want to. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, he said, Rick Turn of the Jerry is the Jerry. most. Jerry. Jerry. Didn't Jerry. It. Sorry. Sorry. Jerry. No, That's my bad. Silly. Is the most sell outingest episode in their history with Wrangler, Shoney's, and of course, Wendy's making an appearance. And they tend to do a decent job of making that funny. Overall, it's not a great episode, but it'll do. I'm hoping that now that everything is more stable, they'll do a bang up job next season. My favorite thing I picked up on this episode is how the alien ship looking for Beth finds Morty on a football field, a completely random sport for him to be at that moment in time, but can't find Beth, who is at the therapy session. <laughs> I love that sin too. Yeah, that's um, a good one. And the ultimate reasoning for that is so that Summer and Morty can have a ship to save the day later. Yep. Yeah, I uh, I think I like this episode more than Chris. Um, but again, I, I and you know what it is? I think of the way this episode ends is the kind of thing that I like when this show does, where it actually attempts, despite its silliness, to be a little more meaningful and a little more deep. There's some depth towards the end of the show about Rick's relationship with his daughter or daughters, I guess in this case, uh, that that I like. I like when the show kind of wades into that stuff. And so I, I came away from it liking a little bit more. What yeah, about you, I thought Jonathan? it was okay. Yeah, I thought it was fine. Um, I think I'm kind of, maybe like about like Chris. I don't know. Maybe I liked it a little more. Um, I, 
I wasn't particularly, I don't know. I thought it was fine. I, I saw in the comments, especially a lot of people seemed to really, really like this episode and thought it was a great like ending to a season, I guess, for a lot of people that's been kind of uneven. Um, I didn't get that out of it, but um, I definitely laughed a lot. So. Yeah. yeah, at the very least, it's always funny. Uh, yeah, and, and I got the feels life. at the end. I thought they handled that pretty well. We actually got a few people asked why we didn't take a cent off for that. I, I, I it never that actually never came up. Like neither one of us really wrote anything in that area. Well, um, as Danae is famous for saying, we're not cinema. Remove the sins. We're cinema. We're cinema. Sin- we're cinema sinners. <laughs> Uh, Danae, why don't you lead us into the video itself with uh, any thoughts you may have on the episode as you picked up from, I'm, again, I'm just assuming everybody can take a drink. You didn't watch the full episode? No. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your thoughts as you watch the, the video. It was funny because the very first sin is about how we forgot that her name wasn't Pam. <laughs> And we, I wrote, that was my mistake. I wrote her name as Beth's name as Pam uh, in my script last week. And then it went through a combine process. Wasn't caught. <laughs> it got all the way through the first pass of our, uh, our editing. Nobody saw it. And then all of a sudden I'm just going, uh, like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, wait, who the fuck is Pam? <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to ask for a pickup pretty like last minute because I I'm thank God I found it. Like, can you imagine if the video had gone out and we called her Pam? Well, we've done it. We've certainly called characters the wrong name in a couple of our videos recently. Well, even in this even in this episode, um, I wrote that sin about you know he had impregnated a planet. It it happens twice, and he actually didn't impregnate the planet. He fucked the planet, right? Uh-huh. Uh, which That's is right. what I should have wrote. But I wrote impregnate. But then once again, I mean, that went through a few different people. And yeah, you know, this, and, had, like, and I mean, that's, it's fine. It I had mean, nothing to do with the actual con, like the actual sin. Like it didn't change no. the sin at all. But it's just yeah. an incorrect way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, and but then, the Pam uh, thing, like that's major. Yeah. And it, so it's funny to me that the very first sin is about the show thinking that she's sort of this like throwaway name. And then we had the mm-hmm. same thing happen. I yeah. love that little yeah, crossover. That was, that yeah, was pretty nice. fun for me. Um, so, you know, I'm picking up the content of this episode as I'm watching the Sins video. And so I'm realizing this whole thing is about a clone. So I love pointing out this should have been called Clone Wars. But that was super clever. Um, and then the the sin about, uh, like, did you miss Earth? I'm a clone. And then the question was, you know, do you miss Earth? And then, like, the person takes an opportunity to say, like, I'm a clone. And pointing out in the sinful way that... You're getting plot information through a question that wasn't even related to that. Yeah. And it got me thinking about how much that happens in what we watch, where somebody asks a question and the writers take an opportunity to sort of loopity loop their way to some sort of plot mm-hmm. convenience or exposition yeah. of some kind that they or, or a clue that they want you to know about. Um, and I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing to maybe look out for in the future more specifically. You know, so there's some sins that we sort of hone in on really easily. And that one's a little bit more mental gymnastics because you there's a question and then it goes someplace. You have to stop and go. Was that even related to the question that was asked? Mm-hmm. So I really liked that one. I thought it was a little clever uh, find. Uh, and then the Levi versus Wranglers for planet <laughs> destroying collaborations was another one of my little ones that I like chuckled at. I liked the whole thing. A lot of them were even the ones that uh, Chris mentioned. I also really enjoyed too. I just like doing silly stuff like that. Just like doing a throwaway line like that feels more like a Levi thing and like not explaining. Yeah. I mean, there's not there's and there's nothing to it. Like I mean I'm not you mm-hmm. know but it's just I like when Chris lets me keep those. In. <laughs> no I had. I had that marked as one of my favorites, too, uh, that really feels more like a Levi thing. Uh, I also like any time with this show where we're just, like, uh, mentioning that the show justifies basically anything that happens in this universe. And in this case, it was the Rick probably did something where messes clean themselves up in some other dimension or something. Yeah. Uh, that made me laugh. Uh, I, I, I can't believe we have an irreversible uh uh mention in this episode the show gives me irreversible irreversible flashbacks that was chris uh so in danae in case this means nothing to you uh if we decided to explain this to you it would be another the mist 
uh, oh. moment. Uh, time. I've actually, I've actually never seen the movie, so I don't. I know. I know that. I know it's dark. <laughs> so uh, that's I've, putting it lightly. Yes, I've kind of avoided it. I, that director, I've never wanted to venture into his filmography. Uh, I also really enjoyed the Ghost of Alderaan. Is pissed. Uh, that made me laugh <laughs> so hard. Uh, and it's such a perfect way to get out of that sin. Uh, I yeah, this is this is really fun. I enjoyed it a lot. What about you, Jonathan? Anything else you wanted to mention? Um, from the I just enjoyed. I wrote the thing about. The, I enjoyed talking about the bullshit with the portal gun. I've never understood that portal gun, and I don't think it matters. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think the show cares. They're just going to have him use it whenever he needs to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, that was just a moment where you could kind of call it out. And I love that we have um, a president that you can use his name as a verb. Um, <laughs> I'm. I'm a. Uh, I'm using that a lot these days because it's just so right there <laughs> yeah. for the taking. Yeah. Um, and that's that's always fun. <laughs> I feel like future generations are going to think that's where the word came from. I feel like there's there's <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Like, you, like, like there's like such a connection. Right. Like if somebody says, Trump's, Oh, you're trying to gonna... trump me on that, I feel like they're gonna believe yeah. that came from Donald Trump being president. <laughs> so funny. I a hundred mm-hmm. years from now. Uh, yeah, I know you. You very well. You might be completely right. I, that's just faulty. And then there's going to be someone like in the future that's like you, Aaron, who's going to have this <laughs> what is it, like them. a lexicon, the etymology of, of a, every word. Yeah, etymology. Be like, well, actually, <laughs> trumping used to mean like one upping or like being the top. Yeah, that was, um, that but was now, me in college. By but the way, now it's a negative a connotation. Now, when you're trumped, it means that you've been trolled or <laughs> you're racist. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's how I was saying I was a dick in college, which. Find out more about that on the bonus pod on Patreon. (laughs) (laughs) To be our go-to statement. Uh, Anything else you wanted to mention, Jonathan? Uh, No, no. That you guys mentioned all the other stuff, but it was fun. Uh, It was like you know we've already kind of talked about that, but it was fun. It's kind of kind of sad sad. and cool that it ended. I'm kind of sad it's over. I kind of miss that rush every week of getting that script ready and everything. So yeah, now I'm gonna have to go back to cocaine. And there is no commentary in, in a bonus pod about that. So if you want to learn more about his cocaine problem, <laughs> write to us at the Patreon. <laughs> write to us at what is Jonathan's cocaine issue at cinemasins.com. No, I really, I really had a cocaine problem. You'd feel really bad right now. Let's move on to The Simpsons. You only move twice. Uh, classics in uh, Simpsons episode. Simp- so we did some more Simpsons. Some Simpsons. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we actually had many comments about how did we not do that? And did you see those comments? Oh, I had put that in the description. Isn't in that where where those comments come oh. from? In the comments, I had said Simpsons. Uh, I think, or in the description, I had said Simpsons. So, so now we know. I never read the. The description. description. That's what I tweet. Don't. I tweeted out. I I took that for the tweet too. So if we really want to tell people something, it should be in a pinned comment, not not in the description, because people don't often read those descriptions. Um, but yeah, you only move once. Uh, this was a Dicer Hughes script. Danae and I wrote on this one. Uh, this is the episode that is pretty much uh, Albert Brooks voicing a Bond villain that Homer goes and works for, but of course doesn't realize he's working for a Bond villain because he's an idiot. Uh, and it. <laughs> It is it is one of the most fun Simpsons ev- episodes ever. I really I, love this episode. I don't remember this episode because I didn't work on this one and I didn't watch it before I watched the video. And I was watching the video just trying to find something that would click. But like I just I do I I mean I maybe I'm sure I saw it. I feel like I watched like the first like ten seasons pretty much all the way through. But um, I just did not remember it. Albert it's, Brooks obviously has been on done various characters on the show. I believe this is uh he's so perfect in this and yeah. he's so great and and part of the the fun is how much he improvises and brings out of the other characters and it's it's just a good time today what did you think because you're not you're not like a simpsons completist or anything you've seen an episode here or there i'm sure but sure yeah um yeah i've seen i've seen episodes so i'm familiar with like the general vibe of each character um but it was really interesting to to send this one i don't know enough about the Simpsons, but I found it really hard to believe that they would want to move back to Springfield after being in this new place. So um, I was like a little bit disappointed that it was such an eat, like it was such a weird, just, oh, we want to go back home because we have allergies. And we send this in, in the episode. We have allergies and I'm not having fun in school. And that's just, so that seemed weird to me, even though I haven't seen a lot of Simpsons. So I wasn't sure if maybe that was more realistic than I 
knew about. But well, the I weirdest don't... one, in, and maybe it is true, but the weirdest one is March, right? Like, just like, my life's too easy. Can we please go back to where my life is harder? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, God forbid you can sit down and drink a glass of wine every day and have nothing to do. Uh, yeah, it just seemed... It just seems like a far stretch, but then of course there's a there's a villain, and that's a far stretch as well. And this is a cartoon; we're supposed to have fun with it, yeah, and so I exactly. did. I had a lot of fun with it. I also had a lot of fun sinning it, and um, I had fun doing research on it. Um, and I actually, you guys are find this funny. So I was doing my outtake uh, like run on an upcoming script, and so oftentimes I'll watch, you know crazy clips on YouTube trying to find something that matches up with the outtake that I'm looking for. And during one of these moments, there was this guy strapped to a table with a laser kind of going up the table and he was wearing like a suit and there was an evil guy and they were kind of in this business thing. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> you know, the Bond reference that you just made. I had no idea that was a Bond That's reference. one of my favorite Bond movies. It's a uh, Goldfinger. No idea what it was. I've never seen Goldfinger. Like, I kind of got the vibe from watching The Simpsons, so I sort of knew what they were doing, of course, but I didn't understand how, like, much of an exact reference it was until I was like, wait a second, The Simpsons did that. <laughs> well, you, yeah, I was going to no. say, you've probably seen many parodies of that too. Like Austin Powers, I know, did it. And uh, many I just don't remember. People, yeah, I don't remember it. Infamous moment. So I, I kind of was like, yeah, duh, that was duh. But it was really, really fun and I enjoyed it a lot. So. Jonathan, why don't you kick us off uh, with some of the stuff you enjoyed from the video? Uh, yeah, no, I um, the store has a babysitting in its scanner. I thought that was hilarious that you guys pointed that out, that that was like the real problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have no grass. We have grass. I love stuff like that. I thought that was very <laughs> funny. Um, that was a much, is... much longer sin, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, much, really? much, 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 much longer sin <laughs> that got cut down to. Oh, are we going to talk about that? Are we going to talk about that? Yeah. Well, what's what's the what's the segment that we have where we can do like comments or like cut stuff? I... <laughs> we, we do something like that. Yeah, it's coming up on the show somewhere. Um, she uh, she doesn't know how to pit fart correctly. <laughs> I thought it was very funny. I loved the narrator's obsession where the knife went. <laughs> how the, that kept you guys kept coming back to that. We yeah. both wrote almost identical sins about oh, that missing funny. knife. Uh, that was one of the funniest parts in the combine process was the fact that we both noticed that knife was missing and both yeah. wrote like uh, stories about it being used nefariously. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that was good times. Nice. And I just wanted to say um, I'd be pissed, too, if somebody told me I now own the Denver Broncos. <laughs> fuck the Broncos. So uh, I, felt, I, felt, I felt for Homer when he said the Broncos. What about you, Danae? Um, I... Uh, I liked so much about this one. Um, I could, I liked almost everything about this. Like this one for me just had a lot of fun. It was fun to sin and it was fun to read the script. So, um, I'm just going to point out some comments that I really enjoyed, uh, at Segway 99 said, not going to lie. I was really pulling for a, that's racist sin when Bart is in the special class. And the one kid says, I moved here from Canada and they put me in here because I think I'm slow. Eh? I, that's that comment. And the many, many others on YouTube blew my mind with how much people know this show and how much fun they were having with it. Um, like, And then there's people who are like, nothing is wrong with it. It's fantastic. It's a, my favorite episode. It's perfect in every way. Followed by a thank you for sitting this. This is my favorite episode. Just the reception of it and how people how react. Yeah. To things being sinned like for us it's an honor to send something but some people get all did you guys get any flack for the collection box i didn't i didn't read no i don't stuff. oh that's good i don't think so i didn't because that was any. a conversation i remember having mm-hmm. um i really liked the fart joke that helped jeremy cheer up from depression enough so that he could remove a sin uh that was a really <laughs> That was a really fun one to see people comment on uh, as Mm -hmm. well. And that was actually so many people mentioned that one that they thought that it was just funny that 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 that's the sin off or that was the moment that we choose to give back. And we did get some flack for not having anything in the the sequence when there's the whole act like attacking and like the whole bond moment where they're coming in to the secret lair and they're fighting Mm -hmm. and everything. Um, So everybody kind of pointing out that that's because that part was perfect and couldn't be sin. So but we're not we're not cinema remove a son. So that's right. So. That's right. We well we do, but we like to do it in a trolley way if we if we can <laughs> if it's possible for us to do that. But yeah, I, I like I could mention specific ones all day. So I'll just def- defer back to you. 
Yeah, I had a fun time with this. Uh, I did a search for northern reticulated chipmunks and found out they didn't exist. Uh, but rather mm-hmm. than sending them not existing, I sent that they were extinct, which uh, I thought was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, doing the research on Christopher Columbus popularizing the hammock, uh, which was fascinating to me. I'm, it was invented by probably, again, I think we mentioned this in the sin that it's of some dispute, but uh, native populations uh, in North America seem to have invented it but christopher columbus uh popularized it um so any chance to send columbus uh i enjoyed doing that and uh yeah you guys mentioned pretty much everything else i had other than that's oh. frogist uh which i, I wanted <laughs> to mention uh because not a lot of people know that that frog is a term for uh, french people so yeah oh, i didn't know that i did i, I did want to mentioned because i forgot like i i really enjoyed researching the layout of the simpsons house to prove that their fireplace wouldn't have fall f- fallen down in that direction another one no we both there. did yeah another another yeah. one we both researched yeah um the, i did a lot of research on this one i think you know we both we both did i did another one about the whole url thing like because i didn't understand the joke when it got to the part on the episode as to why that was a thing because when it was written when when the simpsons episode came out it was a ridiculous idea to think that a, a school would have a website because websites just n- right not everybody had one so it was a ridiculous joke because everyone's like yeah right like who would have a website but now it's so <laughs> every school has a website so yep. it's one of those where the the joke didn't like keep going you know yeah. didn't keep going it aged out uh, it, yeah, it shifted over time. So that was really fun to research. And then I have another one that I researched that I'll talk about in Keeping Tabs. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. Mm-hmm. And on that note, we'll move on to <laughs> music video sins. Can we can we move on to music video sins? Let's oh, do no. it. Uh, Harry Styles, Watermelon Sugar. Uh, let's see. This is a song, Watermelon of, sugar. song about uh, cunnilingus. So uh, fun times. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's let Barrett start uh, on this since he wrote it. Watermelon sugar is a bad song. Is that is that a, no? Okay. <laughs> no, um, no we we're talking work. about some weird uh, some weird things today. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Barrett said, "Watermelon sugar is a bad song." I have to admit, but there's just something so endearing about Harry Styles that he nope. makes it work. Uh, very similar to Justin Timberlake. The only thing that really bugged me about this video was how he was eating the watermelon slices. <laughs> Given that this is a blatant allusion to cunnilingus, the voracious ways he tears into the fruit should be horrifying (laughs) to any potential partners. (laughs) By the way, I looked up a lot of synonyms for oral sex on on a vulva. Edifying stuff. Anyway, looks like everyone had fun on the set and the song's not worth, not the worst thing I've ever heard. Feels like feels like we needed to get Barrett on the show this week for keeping tabs and have him list off some uh, some euphemisms for oral sex. Uh, I had never is watermelon sugar. Uh, that's not like a common euphemism. That's just something. Not that I'm aware. Th- of. This, this, but uh, I didn't know what a massage parlor was. So. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think the- got to cancel that appointment. By the way, when I get off, yeah. I, I think <laughs> when you get off, uh, or oh, oh, god damn it, boom. god damn it. Uh, I, I actually kind of like this song. Like the melody of it, I found it catchy. I enjoyed and the chorus. We're gonna, we're gonna play a game. Uh, Danae and I are gonna take bets on whether or not you like or dislike a song. I will be wrong. Well, I mean, sure, the the subject matter is raunchy, but I mean, or... Oh, no, it's not that. Um, I just, I I don't know, just based on what you said about, like, even like last week's song, I just thought you'd be like, it's a little too simplistic. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can't do an Aaron impression, I'm sorry. (laughs) No, please keep trying. (laughs) Uh, What did you guys think think about the song? Because it sounds like... I, I was confused because I had read some of what Barrett was saying in like behind the scenes like in, the, in our chat rooms mm-hmm. uh, and our chat channels about um like his research saying like, like well i just did this and so i was like oh okay what's this video going to be about and then i watched the video and yeah it was uncomfortable <laughs> for me as a woman i imagine it would kind of be teeth. like there's a lot of there's teeth. a lot there's so much teeth and i imagine it's kind of like i don't know maybe like if you see somebody get racked in a movie and you sort of have that phantom reaction in your own body where you feel the pain yourself in a way i don't know if that's ever oh, happened rack, to you guys like, like kicked mm-hmm. yeah yeah you've yeah, yeah, been yeah. kicked in the yeah. balls and, yeah. and so you see it happen in a movie you're like ooh. so yeah i just had a lot of uncomfortable m- memories <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying no never mind anyway um, 
I thought I thought this song was terrible. <laughs> did you? Yes. Well, I did. I, I did it was some terrible. I did some looking because I was like, why is it? You know, why watermelon? And there was something that said that like the emoji doubles, kind of like how the eggplant emoji doubles as a penis. The watermelon emoji doubles as a reference to sexual activity. Ah, I didn't know that. Really? I, of course, I didn't. I, that's what I read uh, on the interwebs, and they never lie on the interwebs. So no. we have to nope. believe it. No, nope. I thought it was, but just it was a like, reference to how you eat slices of watermelon. It was like a. It was. I did like watermelon sugar slang, and there was just like a little pop up that just said the emoji can double as a reference to sexual activity. I, I'm, hmm. not, I'm not. Oh, saying oh. Bite. I wrote down. I wrote this down. Or a quote unquote crude appreciation for a woman's curves, and I'm like, a watermelon doesn't have curves. It's just a- oh, that's about the idea of like melons. That's that's what that's oh, talking about. Okay, okay quote okay. unquote melons. I, I oh, that makes sense. I mean, I'm not saying there can't be like some playful biting involved, but like just yeah, I would imagine that would be a little weird once you know what it's about, Danae. Like you're sitting there, <laughs> just like, oh my god, like no, don't yeah, do if that. I, if I had watched this video and even the sins video without having any idea about barrett's research or or what's going yeah. on i probably would have made it all the way through until he starts being like this is a reference to cunnilingus and i'd be like whatever it's not and <laughs> uh, but because i went in knowing everything was just like all right this is this is weird same, so same. I, <laughs> I don't know if i have like much to add to it um i do have like some favorite sins that i wrote down but that's my general thoughts so. Yeah, maybe it, maybe it means that you know I've been doing it wrong my whole life. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't do that. Don't do what you saw in this. <laughs> I can I can assure you, I would be like, "What Honey, the fuck are you?" I doing? watched an instructional video from Harry Styles. <laughs> gonna Tell me this how this feels. Like I, and I don't even like watermelon, so <laughs> like actual watermelon. Yeah, you you, oh, oh, you, you oh. and DJ Khaled both uh, don't no, like watermelon. No, no, no. Uh, no. All right, let's move into the sins themselves. Uh, Danae, you had Aaron's mentioned trying to make me sound like a horror. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really not. Uh, Danae, you had mentioned you had some sins you wanted to talk about, so why don't you start? Uh, I really like the um, spreading God knows what in addition to the really bad stuff. I just... The clever, the, mm-hmm. the cleverness of that. Uh, anytime BTS is mentioned, I'm like, oh, it's our podcast. So there's a sin in here about BTS. And I was like, oh, it's our podcast. And it's not. It's not. <laughs> no. <a> man. <laughs> no, we're kind of, we're kind of like, for now, we're like third on the list of what BTS usually stands for. <laughs> like, it's it's first second. The, the second is behind the, behind the scenes. Like right, people oh, yeah, use yeah, hashtag yeah, yeah, yeah. BTS on anything that's behind the scenes, and it's yeah. like, yeah. And then there's us. So yeah. and there's us. Um, and then I let's see let, whichever ones we already talked about the techniques that are going on. <laughs> uh oh, he did this series of yay, we're young and attractive and horny, and we know Harry Styles. <laughs> like just his whole I had that delivery of that yeah. sin. I laughed genuinely on that one. Uh, but the one that I had to actually pause and just be like, good God, was uh, the, so by now we know the song is about cunnilingus. So ladies, as hot as he is, do you want to look down and see this face when it's <laughs> happening? <laughs> it's just like, I had to pause it and be like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and then I had to ask myself, would I? <laughs> no. Like, like, I Thank just... you, Barrett. I am now pondering this deep conversation, <laughs> yeah. this deep thought about like, the world. Do I want? Do I want Harry Styles down there? And, right. Uh, do I want him giving me that look? You know. Right. Funny enough, uh, Harry Styles uh, is something that happens down there. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, Jonathan? Uh, what did, what sins did uh, what uh, sins the only to you? one that Danae didn't mention? I, I don't I don't think I heard you say this one was the um, just the where it was all the women and he was just like, is he supposed to do this to all of them? <laughs> and my favorite part about that was he's like, because he needs to get it started because he's yeah. losing light. <laughs> he's gonna run out of daylight. <laughs> he's running out of daylight, and then he said something about his jaw was gonna get sore, and uh, that I just thought that was really funny. Yeah, it is very funny. Um, I yeah, he's he, like. Like, he was like, his jaw's going to hurt. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I lost it when he said, go jump the hilly brush. Uh, that made me yeah. really laugh. Uh, South Park reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the... <laughs> I'm this one just slayed me for whatever reason, but the idea that there would be a more updated reference about watermelon smashing than Gallagher just 
<laughs> killed me because it's kind of this one two punch of yeah that's an outdated reference but then the second part that's really funny is yeah. but what's the more modern reference nobody knows about <laughs> their smashing watermelons like that is the reference there is no other reference come on uh so yeah i really enjoyed that um oh. made me laugh quite a bit uh let's move on to cinema sins we'll kick it off with the long awaited back to the future three uh people have been wondering uh yeah, why if you Chris done one actually and two? announced this on a patreon yeah uh, he did me thing remember uh i do so gotta yeah. be on patreon uh, this Let's was just keep in... talking about Patreon every two minutes. <laughs> Feel free. Feel free. It's a good place. And learn Cinemasin... about massages. CinemaSins <laughs> members are the best. Uh, yeah, Atkinson <laughs> Watkins script. So Chris and Jonathan did write on this mm-hmm. one. And I'm curious, what is, Danae, what's your experience with Back to the Future, the, the movies? I don't remember a lot. I think I've watched them all. Um and I think I like I remember certain things like the train, you know, needing to like the train going over the cliff. I re- I'm like, oh, I remember that. Um, and and the Wild West. <laughs> I think I remember <laughs> okay. part of that. Good. So things you can uh, pick up from the DVD cover. Travel. Got it. There was there was a there was a hoverboard, so that was cool. It was Cl- heavy. Close up, there was a close up of some shoes. Uh huh. So that was that was also cool. No, fuck that hoverboard, man. Robert Zemeckis <laughs> ruined a lot of kids' dreams. Uh, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> oh my god, trying to make us believe that was real. Yeah, but there's video. Um, but I don't have a like a fan love of these movies, but I know that that is a really fun movie series that was mm-hmm. just it was a little unique. bit before you, right? You yeah, been well, really yeah, young yeah, when yeah, those yeah. come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, because you're years old <laughs> that's right <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry it's too many hints too many hints uh no it's your favorite thing to do is try to give hints i know what you're doing <laughs> um no i i i just i remember it being such a big deal i remember like there would be merchandise and you know like the delorean was such a big deal and it being kind of a fun sci-fi kid like you could watch it with your family sort of a vibe and so I can see why it would be a lot of fun. And then it's just, it's fun to see the oh, like the over-the-top mad scientist vibe. Um, Did the Michael J. Fox thing miss you? Like, was he like a, you know, a big... A heartthrob? Yeah, like a heartthrob no. for you growing up or anything? Did you, did you have posters of him on your wall? No, 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 no. No, I, um, my heartthrob was from watching uh, an old video of Freddie Mercury singing from Queen, so... And I wasn't born when I was obviously way so like that was my possibly was my who knows who knows how old how old you are really oh my god yeah I could be a vampire and be like ageless mm-hmm. could be could be <laughs> sorry that's not the that's not the sound I want to make ever again <laughs> Jonathan what, anyway. what's what's your experience with the Back to the Future movies. Oh, no. I mean, I, I grew up watching them. Um, I saw all of them in the theater and um, uh, maybe even a few times. And I just watched them on cable constantly uh, growing up. Um, I don't know that I'm as big of a fan as Chris. I mean, Back to the Future is his. That's one like, of his things, right? Like, he loves them. I think that's like his favorite movie. Like, that's kind of his go-to favorite movie answer. Yeah, so, yeah. That's what I remember. Uh, I, I know, like, he'll say sometimes, like, he'll say Godfather or something sometimes. But, yeah, that's, that's typically been his go-to. Uh, uh, but I will say this. This, like I thought it was interesting that you know Chris uh, well actually you'll read what Chris has to say so maybe I'll comment on that later I prefer two uh but I did enjoy this viewing of three because it had really been a long time since I'd seen this one and I kind of had memories of it being fun but not much else and I guess that's the case but I I had a lot of fun re-watching it it was it was a really fun movie to kind of uh go back to and enjoy again and then get to send it and uh, just you know be a part of that aspect because obviously I didn't I didn't do anything with the first two those were before I got on the cinema send uh writing team so uh it was it was just it was a blast to work on i, I had a lot of fun with it i also re- realized like just how much just i just love that era of michael j fox yeah uh, that's I why i mentioned family it ties fan yeah me too and, uh, me too yeah. I, and th- that is the key element of my nostalgia for it is michael j fox mm-hmm. i i love that man so much and it's just really fun to go back and watch those those movies because of his performance in them. I'm partial to the first as most people are. I, I think it's yeah. the most complete film. Absolutely. I think honestly, I see the other two is almost one movie 
And I, it's weird because they're very different stories. But I well, know, they were filmed. They were filmed back to back, though. Right, and, and they came out. A, there was a to be continued after the second one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I kind of see them as the same. They're both really fun, but just kind of silly and don't mean as much to me as the first one. But yeah, yeah. But but as far as sequels go, I think they're pretty. They're they're pretty stellar as far as you know sequels go, <laughs> especially from that time period where it, sequels weren't as were more money grabs than any. I guess would yeah, be the best way to put it. I think if I was pushed, I would say I like two better, but it's probably just because there's more fun meta time travel yeah. kind of stuff in two that appeals to that side of me. But Yeah, me too. I, That's I really, exactly why I enjoy it. But I, I like them both. So what did Chris have mm-hmm. to say today? Uh, Chris said BTTF3, which is not BFG. It's different. Or BTS, um, any of right. the versions. Mm-hmm. God, now we're fifth. <laughs> Damn it. Um, Back to the Future 3 used to be known as the quote unquote better sequel to Back to the Future 2. Wait, what? How did, wait, okay. <clears throat> I think that's changed over the years, and it's apparent now, 30 years later, that 2 is the better one. The dumbest thing for me is this movie. Oh, sorry. In this movie is how Doc claims he needs to be anonymous and not change the future. But he sets up a blacksmith shop dead in the cen- dead center mm. yeah. of Hill Valley Friendship and is active sale. in the community. His decision to help Clara find her house would have immediately changed history. But he forgets to help her on that day. But just so happens to be in the right place at the right time to save her, which changes history anyway. Apparently, the story of an unknown teacher dying in a ravine stayed with Hill Valley residents for over a century. <laughs> yeah, he was really stuck on that. I remember that in the scripting phase. Like, that was something he was re- There might have even been a couple of sins about it. Yeah, I think there's like a sin about, like, that the valley is named something before she was even dead, or maybe was mentioned there. Anyway, uh, he goes yeah. on to say that weird ending where Doc's flying time travel train shows up on the tracks right by marty and jennifer who just happened to be at that location in 1985 is baffling on so many levels i have more questions about the ending of bttf3 than most movies i have ever seen very nice and then he but he does not list all the questions i just want to let you guys know (laughs) we're not going to go into a list of questions good let's go into a list of things we liked about the uh the video um i'll start off on this one uh, I really laughed when the movie, when this um, Sins video said, don't be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 movie. That just yeah. made me laugh because <laughs> yeah. they were rushing to go back in time. It's like, why are you rushing? You're going back to the same date. There's no, it's, that's one of the weirdest thing with time travel movies is they add this intensity that doesn't have to exist. Uh, the, okay, the interesting, the cave of convenience and then there's another of convenience sin in the next uh one we're going to talk about too but i love that i think that that's a, a really fun way to do that sin um the the whole story about the spittoon and uh not throwing up and then telling the movie theater story mm-hmm. uh that that really made me laugh uh primarily because they mentioned the movie eight seconds which is just the perfect movie to mention when you're talking about spit uh glass uh, gasoline versus plutonium was a really interesting conversation to me the idea that all of a sudden this thing runs on gas when that has not been the context in the right. rest of yeah. the movies yeah um the man talking loudly uh about it on the train nothing is more terrible than a man's broken heart uh <laughs> just such a fun way to say that uh, that's the power of love, man. Huey Lewis would be proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that one down too. Um, and then, uh, and then just the realization of like Einstein is already in the train. The dog is already in the train, but they're just coming to this place like to get Einstein. But Einstein's already in the train. That's such yeah. a stupid mistake. But it's so. We had some. Yeah, we had some back and forth on that. I that really that confounded me more than it probably should have. Once once Chris went the direction you're talking about, it made more sense to me. But I was so just. I couldn't. I could not like wrap my head around <laughs> trying to figure out. Yeah, I, I wrote something, but it just didn't work. Yeah, I, it's a lot of great stuff in this. I'm I'm really glad we finally got around to cool. sending it. And I hadn't seen the first two in a while, so and um, there like so the I the way they explain time travel in those like I had kind of forgotten about the idea that like time stops basically once they travel, which is weird. <laughs> Yeah. So I had a few things involving that. And I think that's partly where this whole Einstein thing at the end confused me. And then Chris was like, no, yeah, in the first one, you know, they ex- they make it 
pretty clear that like nothing moves forward until they're done doing whatever they're doing um which is which is kind of silly but um but that's the way they tell it so that was you know that was what we had to work with i guess so what about you danae what are some other ones you liked um well first i wanted to mention because there, there was a there's a run kind of towards the end about like what happens when someone removes themselves from time period to go to another mm -hmm. and then it sort of like compresses everything sort of down and that's really hard to do uh oftentimes to take a big concept and then like create a sin that goes on for like a paragraph but still manages to keep your attention and i thought that it was written really well you know that yeah. mar the only marty that it could be is the one that experienced both back to the future two and back to the future three and that's just like i mean it confused the fuck out of me but i'm like yeah get him <laughs> I, I feel like i'm gonna be honest the time to those sins are chris like I, yeah. mean, I feel like that's like that's chris chris can write a long sin like i think better than any of us in my right. opinion um, i i'm, I'm gonna be honest i was watching that and after the first sentence, my brain was like, this sin is about time travel, be crazy. And you don't have to listen to the rest of it. Yeah. My brain just shut off for the rest of it. I was like, yeah, time travel movies don't make sense. That was that was because he asked me, he's like, because he made a note. He was like, he's like, read this one like closely. Like, not that I don't read the other ones, but he was like, I just want you to make sure you're on the same page with me. Right. Like, I got confused. Like, I was right. like, oh, my God, where did I, I never thought about this. And yeah, um, we got a tweet about up. it. At at T Train eighty five said, I just wanted to com commend whoever wrote the run about the future Marty in part two having to have been in the future Marty from the end of the third, because otherwise he was transplanted out of the timeline at the end of part one. It was simultaneously hilarious, brilliant, and confusing. Yep, Marty <laughs> lost again. Those, so, are, those are sins I just, uh, I just, uh, you know, um, I just go to. Okay, well, Chris is yeah. smarter than me. Let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's writing that. I'm writing like, look, Marty's headrest disappeared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is yeah, those, true. It's valid. Which is true. I know. Valid. But... Yeah. Don't I'm take like, my headrest going... in away. I love the headrest sin. <laughs> the, the first, uh, the first thing that I wrote down that I was like, he he he, is Marty is going to outrun a bear here, and somebody didn't do their research. So <laughs> I it's had like, that one written down. That's, that's a hilarious. smart one. Like. That was so, um, I, all the pointing out of the discrepancies, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, the, Marty going to the Prometheus School of Running Away from Things, which is disappointing <laughs> considering how many times he's changed directions and <laughs> the last two times this happened. So surely he doesn't need a skateboard for every escape. I thought that was kind of clever, and I like that. Uh, let's see. There was one more I think that I wrote down. Oh, that, that was accents. Um, have I made a comment about this <laughs> awful Scottish accent yet? Wait, they're supposed to be Irish? That's even worse. Like You know, it's funny because I I just love the Irish and Scottish Scottish accents so much that even if they're horrible, I'm like, Oh, that's perfect. That's, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> just like, I'm listening to it, I'm going, What a great act. She's doing great. And then Chris is like, That's awful. I'm like, Yeah, I guess maybe that's awful, but I loved it. But it was so great. Oh, and then nothing makes your panties drop quicker than a few well timed Jules Verne quotes. So <laughs> It's truth. That was me. <laughs> it's truth. Yeah. It's just truth. I I like um I just enjoyed the we we got to mess around with the I just the I one thing about this movie I think that's kind of lacking is that it's another riff on the whole like there's like there's a Biff relative. Yeah. And there's a McFly relative. Like they could have had like a new villain, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they could have had like a new person in that role, mm -hmm. like, you know, brought in like Ed Harris or something. I don't know. Um, but not that I dislike the actor that plays Biff, but I just I don't know that that all started feeling really repetitive. And then like at the end, Chris wrote the stuff about, you know, that whole real about like, uh, you know, this is similar to Marty taking a stand in the first movie and then another another Biff falls into manure. And it was just, you know, all that stuff was just fun. My favorite uh, sin that emphasized that was the one where it comes right after they switch their catchphrases. And Marty says, great Scott, and Doc says, heavy, yeah. or whatever. And I think the sin is just another, you know, quote from the movies. Or I just, That was really well done. I also like Chris pointing out that they uh, they put a new scream in for Doc for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And he said it sounded like ear scabies. Yeah. Ear scabies. Um, and then I love the part where Marty's talking about how, like, the, something him and future Doc did on the time machine. And then Chris wrote, what's this we shit anyway? <laughs> Because uh, clearly Marty had nothing to do with the invention of the time machine. Right. Um, and then, yeah, and I also had that bear thing. That made me, I was dying when I was reading the script when it came up on that part. Um, and then the only other thing I had was they changed history to the point that the cemetery isn't in business anymore. 
because mm-hmm. <laughs> there were no grave sites they were all gone <laughs> yep yep that's the uh that's the it's a wonderful life corollary the entire cemetery oh, yes. uh turns into something else uh all right let's move on to serenity this was a scott watkins joint so once again jonathan writing on everything <laughs> jonathan what yes and i did what? write both of the of convenience sins and then probably <laughs> because i wrote these like back to back so there were just two situations where that popped in my head well i'll just i'll just mention it now uh too because it's kind of on uh brand with the two on, of convenience but there's also the at atmo is obno yes uh, which technically this was the first one right right yeah, yeah i remember us talking about that uh so yeah, when that popped up one. i was like it's it's yeah. such a great sin. You know what I did? My brain did. Uh, shouldn't it be Abna because it's obnoxious? But actually, <laughs> but actually, atmosphere is also that way, right? Like yeah. calling yeah. at it yeah. should be Atma. Why don't you go Atma. comment about that on YouTube? <laughs> uh, let's talk about the movie itself uh, first. Let's hear what Jeremy had to say uh, today. What did Jeremy have to say about Serenity? He said, "Good movie, not as great as I want it to be." but a fine approximation of the show. Recently caught a marathon of the show after writing The Sins. The show is so good. So much potential for long-term stuff. The movie's big failing is that it very much... Uh, that it is very much a condensed rehashing of the show's only season. So fans of the show don't quite get enough new stuff and new viewers are given so much information. It's daunting, especially the triple fake out openings, though there is a nice one shot or two in the film. Uh, is it two? What? Chul? 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 What? Chul? Chul? Oh, I, I don't know how to say his it's, name. Actually. It's Chuyotel the... Ejiofor. Yes. Chu- Chuyotel? Mm-hmm. Chuyotel. Oh, mm-hmm. Chuyotel. Chuyotel yes. is... For, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. I that don't know guy. what to do. Chuiatel Edgy Four. Chuiatel Chuiatel. It's one of those two, yeah, or or a combination there's, of them. There's there's no like there's there's no way to know how to pronounce this guy's name, and I'm just gonna say I'm sorry. I'm gonna say Chuiatel. Okay. Chuiatel oh, is pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good as the villain in another universe. Angel got canceled after one season, and Firefly got five seasons. And I want to live in that world. I also think that if Firefly existed today and got canceled, the fans would have made would make use of social media and get it picked up somewhere else. I absolutely hate how this movie ends with some cheap generic storms getting worse. We'll make it through dialogue. That's the end. Good night. I remember very similar feelings when I saw this of, man, this is great. I'm glad this exists. And also, man, I'm sad that it ends this yeah. way. You know, like it's just it's one of those movies where I, I don't know. There's almost a there's a sadness to it. As much as I love Firefly and as much as I think the movie is great, it's it's just there's a there's a weird bittersweetness to it that's hard to hard to put into words, I think. This so. was a really fun movie to watch. I saw it opening night and um and most people that were in there were fans of the show that was that's one of my most memorable theatrical experiences just everybody like because everybody laughing at the same moments you know like the character moments and Mm -hmm. the stuff that we liked about the show but yeah i think i'm with you i've seen this movie so many times but i think it has more to do with i love the characters i enjoy spending time with them more than i think it's like a great movie yeah but it's good it's a it's a it's a perfectly it's a good movie um you're a firefly fly fan today right yeah somebody recommended uh, maybe it was you i don't remember who recommended it to me so then i binged it so i i wasn't watching it whenever it was coming out so it was already canceled by the time i got around nobody was that's why it was canceled (laughs) (laughs) um i think there's some people that will say like i was an original fan you know but uh and i think jeremy's point is true if uh firefly were to happen today the social media support would absolutely be giving uh people who produce these kinds of shows, the confidence to pick it up and continue to put money into it. Um, but I remember when I watched it, I was so in- intrigued and I was so excited and I wanted to see where it was going to go. Not even like the characters, will they, won't they stuff, but more like just the, mis- the mystery of the world and, and the merging of, you know, sci-fi uh, space travel with Western that was something that I don't think mm-hmm. I had seen so on the nose before. Like maybe there's been another type of a westernish feel, and I just didn't catch it. Uh, certainly, episodes of um, Star Trek. I, my 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 mom always loved to play Star Trek. That was kind of like one of the safe things that was always on the TV. And I'm sure there's episodes of that where they did kind of a western like thing. Yeah. But that's a different that's a different show. So as far as like spaceships in space, that was my only real kind of like growing up 
reference that I had. And so for me, Firefly was, it's it's like a disappointing web comic that's really, really good. You love the characters, you love the writing, but it's too expensive for the artist to continue. And so they have to stop before it really ties up. And then I did watch the movie, hoping that I had that let's tie this up feel. And I was pretty bummed by the movie. Like, Mm -hmm. because I had just binged the whole show, I didn't need to see most of the stuff that was in the movie. It didn't really do a lot for me except for kill someone I liked. And that was... Welcome welcome to the world of Joss Whedon. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was just a... It was was a disappointing... It was a disappointing experience. And it's fine, but it was a disappointing experience. I wanted something that was, you know, gonna gonna be something like, oh, that was really satisfying because this show should have gone on instead of you know what it was and i thought and we'll talk about this in the sin stuff but i thought jeremy uh or whomever wrote it did a really good job of pointing out how the title of this is even confusing and it just yeah it just didn't it didn't feel like it was what i wanted it to be so yeah and we got i wrote the title sin and we got crap for that because the reasoning and i actually knew this the reasoning was because of the ownership of the title was a different company than was making the movie so i guess they just didn't want to have to pay anything for it so they just recovered right. it serenity but hmm. that doesn't make it any less of a sin in my opinion sure I mean, no i think it yeah. still stands i yeah, mean it is it, it, i think the i can't remember how it was worded maybe you can remember it, Jeremy, but it was like it would be like if a movie was called I, I Mission Impossible, but it was called something else. IMF. IMF. IMF, yeah. And I thought that was a really good comparison. Oh, um, yeah. And then the Star Trek. I said if Star Trek was called Enterprise, and then, of course, the people were like, well, there's a show called Enterprise. Yeah. yeah I, I know. <laughs> yeah. We know those things. Um, yeah. But, yes, so. once again, if I'm going to nitpick, you can nitpick me. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also had some just some general comments from uh, Twitter because I kind of asked people about their general ideas. If you want me to just read those real quick before we jump into the yeah, sin, be like, throw it, throw it in. Um, Paul, let's see, at Polly underscore Walnuts says the Serenity video didn't add anything I didn't already see flawed in the movie. I feel it was a great movie to begin with. It felt more like a video showing us the flaws we already knew were there, but didn't want to talk about it. And we should have had more of the show instead. So kind of like repeating what we said in a way. Um, and then I love this one from at rough shot says, I applaud your courage in sending serenity right after Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of two more rapidly loved shows in existence. Also more Avatar, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> I loved that. Well, and if, then, you, if you if you like us doing the show, you could go back. We did the pilot of Firefly. That was one of our earliest. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was one of our first ones. Uh, at Jagged 2319 says, with serenity being sinned, does this mean Firefly can have a run? So you can go back and watch that pilot. Uh, and then he says, he or she says, I mean, there are only like 12 episodes total. I'm sad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a fun. Yeah. yeah. It was a really fun show. I I really enjoyed the show and I really enjoyed the movie because I enjoyed the show so much. It's yeah. good you got to watch the show like you did, though, because one of the other problems with it was Fox aired a lot of Ugh. episodes out of order. Out of order. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. read about that. Because, yeah, it was Aaron. Aaron, I'm pretty sure you're the one that told me to watch this. Because I remember talking about it with you about mm-hmm. why it got canceled. Because I was so confused. And you explained that it was it was aired out of order, which is just crazy. Yeah, they totally didn't get the show. They aired it weirdly and out of order. And, yeah. Yep. That's what happened. Uh, all right. You ready to move on to the scenes themselves? Let's do it. Jonathan, what do you got? Uh, oh, did you guys not want to go since you I worked on it? Oh, yeah, that's true. You wrote on this one. We should go first. I can go first. That's fine. Uh, purple, do it, Aaron. Purple, guys. Keep purpling. Uh, that was <laughs> one of the funniest things I've ever read and seen. <laughs> um, uh, wanted Granola and Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey showed up unexpectedly. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, immediately translating something in English uh, after you say After it, having a panic attack? After or having, exa- what, yeah, yeah, anxiety. I love that. <laughs> Uh, and then Wash's death with the, they all survive this, and then showing him get killed and being like, oh, I mean, that's just like horrible yeah. and awful and amazing at the mm-hmm. same time. Uh, it's mm-hmm. such a perfect way to do that. Uh, and then, yes, the other in- incidents of, of convenience, I think this time best friend of convenience uh, was <laughs> was really great. So, yeah, I loved a lot about this. Yeah, what? the de- Wash's death, though, I do. That was a, that was weird. I, I had written like a story. I, don't, I think at one point I wrote a sin removal and then it was like, I don't know that eventually I got to that place where I was like, Oh, we can do this riff on, uh, they all survived this. Cause I knew fans would want us to tackle that somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be uh, in there. That's somehow. such a big scene. And I don't, 
know that I really like that death because I, I like that Joss is not afraid to kill off his main characters, but I just don't feel like that death signified anything, right? I mean, it, the, it doesn't yeah. really. I mean, it's certainly more realistic. You know, death is maybe, more like yeah, that in maybe the real that's world. Why. You know, yeah. yeah. Comes the out of real nowhere world and... we're flying in spaceships and mm-hmm. uh, fighting uh, reavers. It's not satisfying, that's for sure. No. You know? Um, I liked the, uh, why are they wasting bullets? There's a 0% chance that the Reaver ship with a pistol. <laughs> I like that one. Pointing out all of the candles and all of the, uh. Gotta point out the candles. Gotta point out the candles. But also the curtains. There was many, many of them. <laughs> Wasn't the punchline in that, like, the the religion, like, this worships religion house worships fires. house fires? That's so Would, great. So funny. The whole noble is a grape thing. Just kind of taking that and being like, why not? Um, I think it's as honorable as a pigeon or honest as a rock because it just was silliness. Mm-hmm. The uh, advertisement soon to be released Serenity trading cards moment where you have a yeah. river kind of like floating in this sort of <laughs> cool moment. I like yeah. that. And then the pointing out that uh, when people reminisce on Serenity, they never seem to talk about the plot point where Kaylee has to skin her former friend's oh bodies and God. attach him to the ship. <laughs> That was something I had never thought of until I was working on when I was writing this script. And I'm like, that is that is dark. Like, yeah, like, I never thought about that either. Right? I just and like, it, yeah, that's exactly what had to happen. It was sort of nuts. It, no, yeah, um, she had to like take the corpses and like skin them. I mean, I'm, I I just, I don't know. And then we mentioned it again when you know he's like, yeah. this will be our darkest hour. Like, like uh, yeah, what you about flash when back you to skin? it. Or is this? Yeah, that was super crazy. I loved that. Um, the main character taking off helmet without enough data to find out why there is breathable air. And uh, did anyone also forget Anara was still with them? Just me. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, and I think that was that was basically. Oh, oh, oh. No, at the very end, it was the. Uh, when they hook up and then it's like, aw, you, because her head <laughs> kind of comes down. down. <laughs> it's just such a funny use of the aw, ooh, perfect. So I really and had I'm a good sure time. I'm sure there are people that love the relationship of those two or the will they or won't they. I just found in this movie it didn't really make, it didn't really need to be there. No, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah. The noble is a grape thing is a reference to a variety of grape. Uh, the noble grapes are uh, uh, a variety that is really important for wine. Uh, so. We can get on to Jeremy about that because he wrote that one. No, no, no. Sin's still great. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Get on to him about it. But that, um, that is- you guys mentioned you guys mentioned like everything I had, but I will say the uh, the um, Jeremy wrote this one sin that like when I read it in the script I was like oh that's funny, but then when I saw it in the video it was just hilarious and it was the I think the dreams are the best part of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's just this sin. <laughs> I thought that was great. No, this was a really fun one to work on. Yeah, it's good stuff. Very good stuff. Uh, let's do it. Let's move on to the next segment, Keeping Tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. We're each going to tell a story from putting together the week's content. Maybe a Google search, some strange research, uh, what forms of grapes that we know, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's start with Danae. What do you got? Oh, oh, I searched Papayin. I had to know what that <laughs> shit was uh, from The Simpsons. Uh, he has this moment where the, um, what's I can't remember his name in the show all of a sudden. Albert uh, Brooks? Homer? The, the bad guy. Oh. In the Simpsons episode, he shows up at Homer's door, welcoming him to the neighborhood, and he talks about papayin mm-hmm. and how it's really good and it helps you to be strong. And something told me that wasn't correct. And so <laughs> I went and I looked it up, um, which I love how you pronounce papayin. That's kind of cool. But it comes from the papaya plant, which apparently is freaking amazing fruit. Reminds me I need to eat more papaya. Uh, papayin comes from the papaya. And it, it, when you ingest it, it helps to tenderize, like it helps your digestion. It helps you poop. Well, that's like one of the things it does. It helps you poop. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been linked to help with IBS issues. So I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's interesting. So it helps you poop, but also helps you not. It, it helps. It helps to. It helps to make sure that you're not having the same. It, it does a, oh, like it a ton of stuff. It. Like if you Google papayin, like it's just it's like a magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you're <laughs> just kidding. Um, and it's also like tenderizes meat, so it's used uh in like meat tenderizing products because it helps to kind of break stuff down. 
anyway, it's really fascinating. And I find like there's magic in our food, people. And sometimes fruits can just blow your mind. It's like when the acai berry was blowing everyone's mind, but it's mm-hmm. really the papaya now. It's uh, also, so. people don't know, but uh, papayin sugar is a euphemism for fellatio. Some people don't. <laughs> Don't don't understand when that. When she but. said papaya, I didn't I find thought, that. Oh, did she research the Harry Con uh, the Harry Con <laughs> the Harry Styles video? <laughs> the the article that I found is on Healthline dot com, and these are like you know it's like what is papaya and it has a description, and then it has like all these bullet points. Um, it's been n- known to help ease sore throats, reduce pain and inflammation, aid in digestion, help to heal wounds, and ease muscle soreness, relieve the shingles symptoms. Um, so obviously they've taken the papaya and they've done, you know, like there's powders that you can get that you can take papaya just by kind of itself or in like supplements. Um, and then if you go overboard or you have reaction, there's also side effects that include throat irritation and damage, which goes against what we, okay. Uh, esophageal perforation, stomach irritation and allergic reactions in general. So, you know, as with everything, don't go crazy on fruit just because it's fruit. Do your research. Listen to your body. I'll never forget um, the first time I ate too much pineapple and realized it had burned the inside of my mouth because it's so acidic. Yeah. And I, my mouth was not the same for like three days. And I was like, yeah. I, I just ate a bunch of pineapple. Like, what's the deal mm-hmm. here? Yeah. yeah. Excess is dangerous. Um, but I do want to say as somebody who suffers from IBS, I really have been considering, I've been doing my research on a couple of popping like papaya products that are sold and I've been reading reviews from people and just kind of how to take it since it's obviously like not a drug that you can go to your doctor for. Uh, so I may actually try one and if it works, I'll. I'll let you know because the number one reason you come to the show is to learn about my <laughs> IBS and whether or not I'm doing well. I was going to say, you and me and our, our all our different intestinal issues and stuff, we'd be fun roommates. Uh, oh, yeah. We'd be like, so no much one come pooping. to our place. So much pooping. <laughs> Jonathan, what, what uh, poop-related research did you do uh, this week? Well, I, I, I researched cunnilingus. And, no, I did not. Um, I uh, There's a sin in Back... The only thing I could think of to talk about was there's a sin in Back to the Future Part 3 where... There's a there's a marquee listing of this movie, uh, The Atomic Kid. So I went through this. So I was like, would that like why would that be playing there? You know, in like this one theater town and everything. And so I went and I researched the movies that would have been out in 1955 and discovered that like that's a year I've oddly seen like just randomly a ton of movies from. <laughs> And it's like, what was that funny? That's just that's a that is a a random year to have seen a bunch I, of movies from. Well, it is really well, yeah, for someone who wasn't alive at the time. I mean, Danae was, but I wasn't because um, <laughs> she's <laughs> bold. I'm uh, bold. <laughs> no, but there's just all these movies that I really like from that year. Um, of course, Marty won Best Picture that year, uh, which is if you haven't seen Marty, you've probably seen you might have seen Quiz Show. Uh, that ends up being the big the answer there. Uh, the uh, what were the other big ones? A Night of the Hunter, the the Robert Mitchum film came out that year. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock had To Catch a Thief and The Trouble with Harry. Mm-hmm. Um, Bad Day at Black Rock, which is one of my all time favorite movies. Uh, really good Bogart thriller, The Desperate Hours. Uh, Les Diaboliques, which is one of the greatest thrillers of all time. Um, East of Eden, a uh, really cool Frank Sinatra drama called The Man with a Golden Arm. Uh, Lady Killers. Uh, which the Coen brothers remade eventually. Uh, Kiss Me Deadly, which is a great noir. It Came From Beneath the Sea, Lady and the Tramp. So Oklahoma. much. Uh, Rafifi, which is probably the all-time greatest uh, heist movie. Uh, the Seven Year Rich is another one a lot of people like. I don't, but a lot of people do like that one because it's Billy Wilder and Marilyn Monroe. Uh, but yeah, no, I just thought it was cool. I was like, that's just not a year I've ever really had in my conscience as being like one of the top years. But then I started looking through it. I'm like, holy shit, there's a lot of great movies that came out this year. Yeah. Looks like there are a couple Martin and Lewis movies, too. You always got to throw those in. Very nice. Uh, For me, I wrote on The Simpsons. So we talked about Maggie on the Scanner a little bit, but when I did the research, there's some obvious stuff that's you know been talked about with the simpsons and different things and the idea of the 847 dollars and 63 cents is the monthly cost cost of yeah. raising a child at the time that they did the research which i thought was really interesting but it just we had it in the script originally i think and mm-hmm. then we came... I, I i did a sin about it but you cut it and you like you cut everything no it's oh, in... i'm sorry it was in I'm my sorry. script i'm fine I'm, I'm fine it's fine wasn't it i'm okay you're not okay <laughs> you're hurting danae do you need <laughs> 
Do we need some attention? Do we need a therapist? Do we do we need some uh, podcast no, counseling? We, we will in a minute because I'm gonna talk about that sin you cut, and then <laughs> we're gonna have to have, have a chat. Why? It was uh, the the sin angle that I wrote for the scanner was something about like the cost of children and what it would be today, and like comparison or something like that. But the <laughs> one that you wrote was like, why is this kid even able to be scanned? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The thing I really wanted to mention, though, was the thing in the comments where people are like, no, when it scans, it says NRA forever. And it's like, okay, that was a one time joke from the 138th Simpson Spectacular that Matt Groening threw in just for lols. And now people are like, you know, messaging it like he's a big NRA nut, which if you know anything about Matt Groening, you know, isn't true like that's not necessarily the side of the spectrum that that he lands on so i don't think he likes anything so. <laughs> so it's just it's it's one of those kind of urban legend things that is actually true it was there one episode but is also not true because it was a joke so well, and they even did they even did that episode uh making uh where homer buys a gun i mean if anybody saw that episode i don't think they would believe that, right you know, yeah I right mean, anyhow uh yeah i just i that I just love the attention to detail that the Simpsons put in those little things that just for a split second, they actually had the monthly cost of raising a child at the time uh, that popped up there. Simpsons is great. When did you quit watching The Simpsons or have you, are you still watching it occasionally? Yeah. I watch every episode. Oh, you still do? Yeah. Yeah. I still watch every episode the week it airs. Yep. I keep thinking about jumping on that, like on Disney plus, but it's probably going to be a minute. I got other stuff I got to watch. It it goes through waves. Uh, It's this season was surprisingly good. It was a really good season. Um, Look, I mean, mediocre Simpsons is is great television. So I just keep watching it. I, I don't think I ever watched it on the regular. I mostly caught it when it started rerun like locally you know uh we'd watch it in college and stuff yeah that's uh, yeah, good maybe, stuff maybe we maybe we were high not important <laughs> so when do when should i talk about the cut sin because i really just want to at least give it something i want it to live somewhere and it's got to live here on the show well I, I would think this would be the segment right okay but you talked uh, about okay. something else so you lost your chance i mean yes yeah, so, there's nothing right, we can so do about that no! i mean <laughs> Fuck you, Popeye. That, that's not even the next. That's not even the next segment. I really like that. I like. I like Popeye. That's a fun word to say. I know. That's why I keep saying it. <laughs> Go ahead, Danae. Talk about mean, okay. mean Aaron cutting your amazing sin. So I spent an hour writing this sin, and I'm not exaggerating. This is. I actually drew a diagram. I had it all. Like I, I took. Um, a digital uh, world builder and like created all this stuff. So I could just make sure that I knew for sure that I had this in the bag. So in this episode, it starts off with Smithers walking out of his door, grass, no grass moment. He turns and he walks down the sidewalk and the limo goes along beside him and he just keeps walking. Well, because of the animation as he walks each, he takes three steps and the, and that's the length of one of the squares on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. And then if you're listening to the audio, you can count how many steps he takes. He takes 44 steps during the limo chat. So that's about 14 total spaces that he walks down. Um, but then whenever he stops and looks back, he's only moved a few feet from his house. And the reason that you can tell that is the distance from the house to a large building in the background. So anyway, the long of it... That I, I the reason it took me so long is how do I write all of this in one sin? Um, so you kind of just have to trust that I did the research on it to like make it work. But Aaron didn't trust it, so he cut it. <laughs> oh, stop it! There were two reasons I didn't think that we could do it. Number one is the proof of it. Like the, if the proof isn't there, it's hard to it's hard to visualize. The other part of it is I don't see it the same way you do. I don't think I don't think it looks like he's back where he started. Oh, I, I remember this back and forth now because I was somehow but, I was. And, this was and, also the script you lost, right? Oh God, yeah, yeah, that happened too. Was, <laughs> you put that, that put that awful. out of your mind. Yeah, I did block that. I totally forgot about that. Um, so anyways, there was a lot of sinning in that moment, a lot of continuity errors, but if he had walked all of those sidewalk tiles forward down the road, he would have been several houses away, but the way that it's shot, he's still basically right in front of his house where he began. So it, I mean, that's why I spent so much time trying to figure out the angle. Like I had it written to where it's like pointing all this stuff out, but it's just, it's such a bulky thing to prove. And at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, it's like, is that going to be fun to do or is it? I was so annoyed by it, though. I like it was like a dog on a bone. I could not. 
I couldn't get it out. And I finally was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to cut out all of my proof and I'm just going to ask the audience to trust me. And then my writing partner didn't trust me. (laughs) (laughs) In general, when we face stuff like this, this is probably a good opportunity to talk about this. In general, if there is a, a disagreement on, you know, a sin that is provable or not provable, we usually cut it because it probably means that someone out there is you know, going to be feeling like, well, that's not yeah. true. That's, we call that argumentative, Chris said something right? Like that to me early on. He's like, if you're, you know, if you're catching something, somebody else will. Yeah, we call those argumentative. The idea that the other side can be argued pretty clearly, and so if that's the case, we usually cut argumentative stuff. You know, <laughs> this is where you and I are going to have to sit down, and I'm going to have to walk you through this until you cave and agree with me, <laughs> and then. You write an apology. Wait, wait, you... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this. I got this. Hold on, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Now that I think about it, Danae, mm-hmm. you were mm-hmm. so right. We should not have cut that. I am so sorry. Dude. People's lives on, would have been so much better with that <laughs> sin in that script. I, I, am, I am so sorry for that. That's right. Well, you know what? I apologize. I, was I will trust like you next movement, time. movement, but it's just not the right timing right now. So appreciate you. Next time I, I will trust you. Next time I will Thank trust you. Thank you. Super appreciate that. <laughs> was that was that like your version of pickle ricking where you don't want to have counsel with me so you're just like <laughs> turn myself into a pickle? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the comment section. I want to know what you're thinking. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're going to each talk about a comment that we liked from the videos. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you kick us off? Um, I, mine was really quick. Um, I just thought it was really funny. Somebody commented on, uh, not really funny, but I just thought it was interesting. Somebody commented for Rick and Morty. Uh, it was Bryce uh, said, we don't have Shonies where I live. So I assumed it was made up for the show as I had never heard of it before. And oh, to live your life, Bryce. <laughs> Oh, Jonathan, that is never had to experience Shoney's. That is amazing because my comment section is from uh, Mike Zeitgeist, who says, wait, Shoney's is a real restaurant. I've never (laughs) seen one in my life. (laughs) Their slogan used to be something too, like, and maybe what was it? It was something like uh, real American food or something like that. Maybe it still is. Those restaurants, like, I mean, Shoney's is basically Denny's ish which uh, some people don't have apparently and perkins which is another restaurant like that that yeah, some people have those and don't. are way better <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's one of those things I'm, i don't know um i'm trying to think of others you guys have village inn by the way i just found that out the other day village i love inn? village inn pie yeah, yeah it's their yummy. triple berry pie is why i am the size i am uh one <laughs> of the reasons at least uh yeah so it's it's interesting regional versions of things that we don't realize are regional a big boy is another one of those that yeah well the big boy and shoney's i think are owned by the same i think people, so shoney's yeah shoney's used to use the big boy now they have like a bear or something uh yeah, yeah. big boy is a burger joint yeah it's interesting um my comment is from twitter at mr under uh, must mr collect underscore it says and this is a question for us hopefully you guys can think of something if you were a simpsons character what would your catchphrase be Hmm. Um, I'll start because I had a second to think about it. I think it's pretty easy. Go live life and do stuff. <laughs> would I'm good probably with whatever would be. It. <laughs> Apparently, that's yeah. what I say all the time. <laughs> I'm good with whatever. It's Jonathan's for sure. Um, I have no idea. Fascinating. It'd be fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just use our our regular catch, our quote unquote podcast catchphrases. There um, you go. Maybe eat my jorts um, instead of eat my shorts since I wear jean shorts sometimes. Or. Uh, some version of don't would be uh would definitely be me as well. So you're gonna rip off somebody else's catchphrase? <laughs> sure. Why not? So we do here. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond. Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're each gonna chat about something else in the world of pop culture that we've experienced recently. Hmm. Who wants to go first? Danae? I'll go. 
Um, this one was inspired from at Doc Trancy on Twitter who asks, besides the Sinverse ones or any other one that you're a part of, if you could recommend a podcast, what would it be and or why? And so I've recommended many uh, on the show, but today I'm going to do one that's called Hello from the Magic Tavern. And I apologize if I've talked about this before, but I think something humorous would be really kind of fun right now. Um, I listen to a lot of different kinds of podcasts. Like if you're somebody who wants to listen to something that's like educational and really uh, interesting with how they um, do their editing. I would recommend like Radio Lab as an example because you can learn something and how they use audio to tell a story is really, really, really cool. I'll never forget some of the first Radio Lab episodes I ever listened to. Uh, one was about the mantis shrimp. If you want to go back into their catalog and listen to that one, just how they explain um, the how we see color and how the mantis shrimp sees color and they use a choir to do it is so, so cool. So that's like more educational and like everyday knowledge that you can sort of keep in your pocket for random conversation. But if you want like a humor podcast, um, I would recommend Hello from the Magic Tavern. Go back and listen to the first few episodes just to get a general sense of what's going on. But then it's all improv based. And one of my favorite parts of this podcast is uh, listening to them be so improvisational that they start to kind of crack each other up and try to hold it together, which always makes me laugh. So it's a mood lifter for me. And so if that's something that you might need, um, listening to people be ridiculous in their imagination about um, being these people in this other world uh, and then having guests on that are all just sort of trying to crack each other up and tell a random story and keep track of all of the bullshit that they make up as they go uh, is to me one of the the highlights of my podcast feed. And I have a lot, a lot of podcasts that I could recommend, but those are the two that I uh, can think of right off the top of my head. And so those are my, that's my beyond the sins recommendation for this week. These days, that that sounds beautiful these days. I've listened to uh, an episode of Hello from the Magic Tavern, and it is definitely tweaks that improv part of me that I love. I think I talked about Middle Ditch and Schwartz on here a while back, and it's kind of that same thing where it's just like listening to people try to keep track of the things they've made up and stay consistent with it is really fun. So Yeah, yeah, it is really fun. It is fantastical. Like the Hello from the Magic Tavern, it is like that D&D-esque type feel where it's, you know, like the characters are like a a wizard and things like that. But the, the, the improvisational part is when they interview a flower and the flower has a, a really bad potty mouth. So, and, and the guests that they have coming on to the show really just sprinkle it with some <laughs> excitement. So I, they have consistent people funny. on the show every week and then they have a guest every week and it's all from this magical tavern. Uh, but the premise is really cool because it's the idea that a person from earth fell through a portal into this alternate reality and is is podcasting from the alternate reality while he's stuck there from a magic tavern where he's interviewing the guests. So he's trying to figure out this world by talking to people. And so the improvisation is fun because they'll make stuff up and then they try to remember it all. Um, and they're really, really good at it. And it's really fun. So I recommend that one. What do you got, Jonathan? Um, I've recently gotten on a psycho franchise kick. Um, uh, a podcast I listen to called The New Flush. Shout out to The New Flush, I guess. Uh, they have started covering the franchise. And I was like, I haven't seen Psycho in a while. So I rewatched the original. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to go ahead and watch. I guess I'll watch the sequels. And um, so I mainly wanted to talk about Psycho 2 and 3. I haven't I haven't rewatched 4 yet. But um, I feel like this is a franchise. I, I feel like this is a movie that Psycho specifically, where I talk talked to a lot of people that have said that they just haven't even bothered to see the sequels. I have talked to younger people that don't even know there are sequels. Uh, they think there's just Psycho and then maybe they know about the remake. Um, real quick, have you seen the sequels, Aaron, at all? Nope. Okay. Um, for me, it's I mean, for it's, me, it's just because Hitchcock didn't do them. So it's, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, maybe I won't change your mind, but I will say this, like rewatching these. Um, I've seen Psycho 2 quite a few times. I think Psycho 2 is borderline great. Um, it's nowhere near as good as Psycho. Don't get me wrong. But uh, the director, Richard Franklin, he's an Australian director, very talented guy, unfortunately passed away way too early. Um, and uh, the writer, Tom Holland, who would go on to do Fright Night, Child play among other things they are huge hitchcock fans clearly and they they um it's really interesting reading interviews with them because they talk about how when this was something they got offered at first they were just like hell no but then they started thinking about it and they started coming up with some ideas and you know they basically took the approach that critics are going to hate us 
uh, you know, diehard Hitchcock fans are going to hate us. So we're just going to do, uh, you know, the best thing we can. And, it, and originally it was supposed to be a TV movie. Um, they didn't have Perkins initially, so that was part of it. But even after they got Anthony Perkins on board, they were still going to make it a TV movie. But then when Universal announced that they were doing it, there was so much excitement uh, from, from, I guess, just, you know, people in America that they were just, they, they got, uh, Tom Holland and, um, uh, Richard Franklin were able to talk them and universal into giving them a little more money. And they released the theater. It was a hit. Um, and it was a lot of the people were just like, wow, that was actually good. Or that was actually better than I thought it would be. And, um, I still, you know, that was 83. So this is what, 37 years later. Um, it really does hold up. The main thing that works in it is that they set it literally the 22 years after it comes out, they set it that far in advance. And like, he's just getting out of the mental and he's just getting out of the hospital. He goes back to his house, which I found that that's a really odd plot point that you just kind of have to go with because I don't think anybody would send him back to that fucking house but um there's a myth there's a there's a mystery at the center of it because you don't know and i'm not going to give it away for people that haven't seen it you don't know whether or not killings start back up but you don't know whether or not it's helm or if it's somebody else and there's also this whole like this real interesting so there's a really cool mystery it's actually really suspenseful um you know psycho wasn't a slasher film because slasher films didn't exist yet but it did kind of create a lot of the tropes that slasher films would borrow uh later on psycho 2 is not really a slasher film but it definitely pays uh, it definitely kind of shines a light on slasher films of the time, and it does have a couple of moments that are similar to slasher films. So that's kind of an interesting aspect to it. Um, I also like that um, they do this whole thing where Perkins, uh, where Norman Bates, um, you're not sure if it's him or not, but at the same time, there's this whole underline that there are people, let's just say, there are people that are trying to uh, get back at him, and there are people that are trying to put him back in to the hospital and so you kind of get the idea that like it got to be it kind of gets almost sad uh because you're just like well what if he is better you know and then these people are just like you know it's like a person trying to get over a drug addiction or something and then people you know pull them right back in Mm. uh so there's a lot and and, and anthony perkins it's like he never left i mean he's he's so good (laughs) and i mean just nails it um psycho 3 not as good um psycho 3 is definitely more in the vein of a slasher film but it's still really interesting because uh anthony perkins actually directed it uh it's a really kind of it's a batshit movie in a lot of ways like it opens up in a nunnery and uh it's it's very odd it's a very odd movie but um and it's a little sleazier uh, than the first two, but I still, I don't know. There's something about it. I still really like, so I, I really, I genuinely recommend those movies. If, if you're, if you're a psycho fan that has just kind of stayed away from them, I think you should give them a shot. Uh, I think you'll be really, uh, interested. Uh, I, I think you'll find them better than you would imagine they would be. And, uh, and if you just didn't know they existed, here, here you go. So I don't know. I just felt like, uh, shining a light on those. Cause I feel like they kind of get thrown in the midst of all the eighties horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, you know, it, there, there's something else going on there with them. I think that's interesting. Uh, a lot of it has to do with Perkins. Um, the fact that he decided to keep playing the role. If they had like recast that role, I don't think they would have worked. I know. Cause there was, apparently there were rumors that Christopher Walken was being considered for oh, part wow. two if they couldn't get Perkins. Um, but I think after watching the remake, it's pretty obvious that it's, it's really, you can't watch a psycho movie without him. I just don't think it works. Mm-hmm. Well, it uh, works. that wasn't the only problem with the remake. And I like Vince Vaughn, but I, that's a, that's part of it i think well i mean the the original he he was so good in the original he Mm -hmm. didn't get any other parts he would you know he typecast himself so so much in that um and he's a great actor and it's just you know it's kind of one of those careers that you wonder if he had done other stuff first how that would have been different well, and even when it's really interesting, especially like in the seventies and eighties, when they when they when he would be in stuff, they would almost always have some sort of psycho reference he had to deal with. There's right. Like a, I don't even remember the movie, but there's a movie where he plays a director, and he's not even the main main character in the movie, but he plays a director, and the film he's working on, he has to direct a shower scene. I mean, it's just stupid shit like that. Yeah. Uh, he has a really talented son too. Uh, I think is worth mentioning. Oz Perkins. He directed the Hansel and Gretel movie that just or Gretel and Hansel uh, was in the movie legally blonde uh and interesting and his career. family uh started a, yeah. a chain of restaurants not unlike shoney's uh <laughs> called perkins so you know there's, <laughs> there's there's that as well uh i'm gonna talk about artemis fowl 
on Disney Plus, which just How came did you out. already see this? I'm a critic. I have special privileges. I have special privileges. Um yeah, no, Disney Is Plus it terrible. Disney Plus sent me a, a screening uh link and so and, yeah, I and 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 it's awful. It's really bad. Mm. Um which I think a lot of people were kind of worried about. <laughs> I just I, heard that sound from oh, what's that game show? Uh, Price is Right. The womp, 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 like yes. womp, 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 womp. Womp. have you, you read know. the books today? What's that? Have you read the books today? No. Oh, okay. Neither have I, and I should I should state that as well. Um, it's the kind of bad that is disappointing because there's promise there. It really, to me, felt a lot like Wrinkle in Time. Do you remember Wrinkle in Time? Mm-hmm. Um, Wrinkle in Time. We is one- send that. What's that? <laughs> we send that. Yeah. Me and you. Yeah, that's right. We did. Yeah. yeah. That movie is awful. That's a bad mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's sad that it's a bad movie because there's talented people involved. There's a world there that could be very interesting. And just mm-hmm. for whatever reason, it never locks into what could make that movie great. And Artemis Fowl feels the same way to me. Uh, there, There's a lot of conceptual stuff that i dig i kind of i love the irish accents i love that it takes place in ireland you know i just i i love some of the creature work um but man it's bad it's just really bad if you ever wanted to know what olaf would sound like if he tried to do batman voice for an entire movie <laughs> oh no have i got the movie for you uh, oh no <laughs> so olaf What's doing a batman voice that's something I that i have to see now <laughs> I haven't seen the movie, but um, and this is is this what they talk about? Is this the first episode of the writers' room for Sif Pop? Do you guys do I see that? Yes, in the yeah, they, they chatted so about their their yet. opinions of it. Yeah, um, but I will say, reading the, I have read most of the books, um, and I will say that actually, I think I've read all of them. But I, I will say that one thing I noticed in the trailer versus reading the book is in the books, he is a villain. Is, I is mean, he? like he he is not a good kid, and uh-huh. it looked like in the movie they kind of Disneyfied him. Oh, for sure. He's the hero. Or he's more of like at the at the, at the best. He's an. I mean, he's kind of. I guess he is an anti-hero in the book in a way, but he's still. I mean, he's pretty much a full-on villain. And the hmm. book kind of explores him becoming more of a villain. Um, Despicable Me reminds me a little bit of Artemis Fowl, like as far as. That's you know, interesting adult. because there's a line that really confused me toward the ends of towards the end of the movie, like right at the end of the movie, where he says something about being a supervillain, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, like it made no sense to me. Yeah, and that's what's so cool about the books, and I think that's why the books were popular because it was something very different. You know, like that's not something you read in kids' literature a lot. Uh, and it wasn't afraid to go to those dark places with his character. I mean, it's still like, you know, they're fun, but uh, it didn't look like it looked like the movie was not doing that at all. And so that that I can't imagine fans of the books are going to like the movie if that's the case. Um, I you're completely changing. Yeah, I, I did not the character. I did not like this this movie. Um, and and I, I wish I did. I wish I did because I, I really did enjoy the world. Should have watched Psycho Two and Psycho. 3. That's right. I should have. <laughs> it's been much much more edifying. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Oh well, that's gonna do it for Behind the Sins this week. Don't forget to make sure you are subscribed and go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. Hang out with us on Twitter. I'm at Aaron Dicer. She is at Danae Says. D-E-N-E-E-S-A-Y-S. And he is at Sam Loomis 13. So for Jonathan Watkins, Danae Hughes, and myself, I'll say I'm sorry, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to BehindTheSinsPod at gmail.com. And be sure to subscribe or message us at Twitter. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. We got some forever stamps, like, I don't know, four years ago. We don't. We just don't mail anything anymore. And you haven't used them in forever. Yeah, exactly. That's why they call them forever stamps. I don't even know how much stamps are right now. I think, basically, in order to keep the U.S. Postal Service going, stamps are now a kidney. I think is what you need for one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm only seven minutes late. Ooh, seven Ooh. minutes. <laughs> have you just been kind of doing them when you get them, or do you have to do like a certain time of day, or do you wait for your voice to get you? I think you seem to sound the same no matter what time of day it is, though. Eh, you know what I've noticed <laughs> is my sin, my sin reading gets better about a third of the way into my read. And <laughs> I, I think I either need to figure out how to find that at the beginning and not like rev into it 
or I need to circle back around and do the first third of the script again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Hello, Danae. We can see you. Uh huh. Hi. You look really excited. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm super excited that my brand new computer is not working. Very oh no. exciting. Your recording studio looks really I, nice. Uh, I can, I, it's cleared off enough that I can oh. see the beware of attack turtle sign, which is always a, a, a good sign. <laughs> yeah, I'm really enjoying putting up my personalized stuff everywhere in my office. So yeah, that, that sign I've had since I was like 12. My beware <laughs> of attack turtle sign. And it's just like one of those things that I've had in my drawers as keepsake. Now I'm getting in all those keepsakes and pulling them out and, and sticking things up. In fact, over here I have another cool one. Here, I'll show it to you. One of those, nice. it says, keep smiling even though you're swamped. And it has Kermit on it. And it makes me so happy because sometimes I feel swamped, but he makes me smile. So I have it in my little, you know, <laughs> you know maybe I should put uh, it right here so you guys can see it. Kermit yeah, the Frog, by mm -hmm. definition, has a cloaca. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get your shirt right now at <laughs> cinemasin.com. Just click on the store. Uh, How are you hanging that stuff up? With magic. Uh, I'm a spellcaster. Oh, it's magic. Did you already have nail holes up there? No, I'm just using like those old tacks. Just use thumbtacks. Poke them into the wall. That'll work for a clock? It's that a really, it. really inexpensive light clock. Oh, gosh. If that clock had any comedic, t comedic timing, it would have fallen right then. Shut up. Don't <laughs> encourage it. Oh, and here's the other one. This one has a cute little bunnies on it that says, love makes your tummy tickle. Oh. It's just, which is actually a little That's... bit bullshit. Guys, I played Dungeons and Dragons last night, and uh, my character super almost died. Can I tell you about it real quick? Okay, cool. I know we have so much time. So one of the people in our party polymorphed into a giant ape who has intelligence of negative two. And so he was pulling on this rope to get this treasure we had found because it was really heavy. We couldn't lift it. So he turned into an ape who was super strong to be able to pull up the treasure. And he's doing a great job. He gets the treasure up. We're super happy. And then the, the, the ape got mad. Um, and was like kind of like defensive. And so the DM, who's in charge of the game, basically says that the guy who's, pl who's playing the character that turned into an ape needed to roll the dice and see if he was smart enough to understand what was going on. And he rolled really, real bad. So essentially, because he was an ape and not <laughs> able to like get to his senses, he attacked us, his friends, and literally almost killed everybody in the party. It was like, what a horrible way to die. There's a really good chance that my character is never going to make it. I understand that. I've already made peace with the fact that, like, my character is probably going to die and, like, all that stuff. But to die by your own party member who turned into an ape that lost his temper, that's a terrible ending. Well, today I, I am sorry that one of your friends turned into a really dumb ape and almost killed you. Thank you. It was really traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sorry, Danae, my mind wanders. I did. I was not diminishing what you were saying about your... I'm, I'm sorry that you almost died. I, I already tweeted about it, so I feel better. Twitter makes the whole world better, right? So, but, you just, <laughs> but, I mean, it's, but I mean, you don't really die, so... So uh, you're, you guys are the fourth and fifth person I've tried to tell my D&D &D story to who literally just kind of like ignored it and kept doing something else. <laughs> no, no, I didn't ignore it. it just... You know how we talked about dreams? You know, people don't want to hear your dreams mm -hmm. last week. Or your um, spreadsheet was, stories. Or your spreadsheet stories. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe D and D is like that, you know? Maybe the adventures no. of my character just aren't that interesting. And I tried to tell you it really succinctly and quickly. Like I left out so much stuff, you know? No, like, I'm just, I'm like, just really rude. I didn't tell you about my my Drake that was also attacking, and I didn't tell you like, you know, that my friend has is wearing a cursed necklace right now, yeah. and that's crazy, and you know, like. And then after he didn't, after he wasn't an ape anymore, we hogtied him and put a gag in his mouth because we didn't trust him. And we all had to have a come to Jesus conversation about telling each other before we turn into apes. <laughs> 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 I just think there are things in our life that some people won't connect to in the same way that we do. And we've had oh, that conversation sure. with movies. I'll go off on oh, a movie and you'll glaze over or start playing a game I on your phone. I never do or... that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I never come back and say I wasn't listening. I'm not that <laughs> Person? <laughs> Cue up T 10 years of recorded audio evidence <laughs> that you oh are God. indeed that person. Shall we do the show? Let's do it. That was like me a couple years ago when I yeah. when I died. And then I was like, then I got, I rolled a natural 20 and now I was like super not dead. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> like that. Only your situation's way more important than mine. <laughs> Don't make me shove my elbow in your piriformis.